Can your hotel card, credit card, or employee access badge be copied without removing them from your purse or wallet? The short answer is yes. In engineering, we sometimes use the phrase, there is a non-zero chance, to describe the likelihood of something happening that is possible, but very unlikely. In this video, we will examine a couple of ways codes on your cards and data on your phone can be stolen, and I will share my test results of products intended to prevent this from happening. I am Dr. John Padfield, an engineer turned state representative turned business professor, and this is Business Reform, where we discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. If you would like to support my work in bringing you informative, sponsor-free videos, I invite you to buy me a coffee using this QR code or the link in the description. In my last video, I mentioned I had purchased a Flipper Zero for this video. If you aren't an electronics geek, you're probably wondering what this innocent-looking device is and what it can do. The best analogy I can make is to call it a Swiss Army knife for electronics hobbyists and enthusiasts. It has a lot of functionality, such as the ability to send and receive data via Bluetooth communications. And it has an infrared transceiver so it can learn codes from your TV or stereo remote control. Then it can transmit those codes to control your devices as part of a smart home setup. The Flipper Zero also has a radio frequency identification, commonly known as RFID, transceiver so it can read data from low frequency proximity cards, that are very common in older building access control systems. It can not only read those cards, but it can emulate those cards, so the Flipper Zero can open doors that still use the older access control systems. The Flipper can also capture and emulate codes from sub-gigahertz transmitters, such as garage door openers, security gate openers, and automotive key fobs. Police have warned about the potential of flippers and similar devices being used to unlock people's cars or open their garage doors. But before anyone panics, I want to stress this is mainly a risk to older garage doors and older automotive key fobs. As I said at the beginning of this video, a non-zero risk means something is possible but unlikely due to limitations such as it requiring a high degree of technical expertise, or devices having an extremely short range of operation. The last feature of the Flipper I want to mention is its ability to capture data from NFC cards and devices and then emulate that data to potentially clone the card from the data that was captured. NFC stands for Near Field Communications, and it is the type of RFID used on things such as passports, hotel key cards, and credit cards with the Tap to Pay feature. Again, I do not want to exaggerate the risk. The data stored in a chip on your passport is encrypted, and by design, NFC only has a range of about 5 centimeters or roughly 2 inches. If someone wanted to capture information from your hotel key, credit card, or employee badge with building access, they would need to get their skimming device very close to your card. While I try to pay with cash as often as possible, I have a personal and business credit card and both have the tap to pay feature. When I pass my flipper over the card, you can see the display change when it copies the data from the card. If I put my card in my wallet, the flipper can still copy the card data through the wallet. If you had your wallet in your back pocket and were going up a crowded escalator or standing in a tightly packed subway car, a person might be able to get a skimmer close enough to your wallet to copy the data from a card in your wallet without you ever knowing about it. While this risk may be small, it is a risk that is easy to completely eliminate. There are several inexpensive items on the market that will protect your cards from being read without your permission. The first is called an RFID blocking credit card sleeve, and you can get a 10-pack of them for $22 on Amazon. I tested these sleeves with my two credit cards that have tap to pay, my university employee badge that lets me into buildings on campus 24-7, and three different hotel key cards, all of which could easily be read through my wallet. The results were the same across all of my tests. When I put my employee badge, any of my credit cards, or any of the hotel key cards into the RFID blocking sleeve, my flipper could not read any information from any of the cards. I then tried another brand of RFID credit card sleeves, 
This set included four credit card size sleeves and two passport size sleeves for $7 on Amazon. Again, I tested both credit cards, my employee badge, three hotel key cards, and my U.S. passport. These sleeves worked flawlessly and prevented the flipper from capturing any data from any card or my passport. While these sleeves worked as advertised, I must admit it was a little bit of a nuisance to put the cards into the sleeve and to pull them back out of the sleeve. In addition, this brand of RFID blocking sleeves is about an eighth of an inch longer than the card, so depending on how your wallet is made, you may have a hard time carrying the cards in sleeves inside of your wallet. I had anticipated that might happen, so I also tested a card vault. The card vault works like an RFID jammer for your whole wallet. Rather than having to put each card in a sleeve to stop it from being read, you can put a card vault, which sells for $35 on Amazon, in your wallet and it will essentially jam any RFID signal reaching your wallet. However, my test results on the card vault were mixed. The card vault worked great at protecting my two credit cards with tap to pay and it protected my employee badge from being read. However, it did not prevent my flipper from reading the three hotel key cards. It was extremely convenient and I liked using it better than using the card sleeves, but if you decide to get one, just remember it didn't prevent my flipper from reading hotel key cards. I also tried an RFID blocking wallet. There are many different brands and styles of RFID blocking wallets, the most famous being the Ridge wallet. My son-in-law carries a Ridge wallet, but he doesn't like how difficult it is to pull out a single card from the wallet, so I decided to try a different brand that looked like it would be easier to access cards individually. The one I chose was a few dollars less expensive than the card vault I reviewed just a moment ago. I tested the RFID blocking wallet with my credit cards, my employee badge, and three hotel key cards, and it successfully protected all of my cards from being read with my flipper. Finally, I said at the beginning of this video that data on your phone could be at risk when you are away from home. That is because of a hacking technique known as juice jacking. While most of the risk we have talked about in this video so far are relatively minor because of the effort involved in stealing data from credit cards and employee badges, but juice jacking is a greater risk because it is relatively easy to do. Juice jacking involves someone tampering with public USB charging stations in airports, malls, or coffee shops. You think you are just plugging in your phone for a quick charge, but when you connect that USB cable from your phone to the public charging station, you may be installing malware on your device and or allowing someone to steal data from your device. Again, I don't want to exaggerate the risk, and newer phones and tablets have built into their operating system some features to help mitigate this risk. The two easiest ways to eliminate this risk altogether, though, is to either carry your own wall charger to avoid public charging stations, or carry a USB blocker, which is sometimes called a USB condom. These devices work by plugging into one end of the USB charging cable between your phone and the public charging station. The device allows power to flow to your phone, but it blocks any data from traveling between your device and the charger. I purchased a two-pack of data blockers for $10 on Amazon, and this blocker works with any combination of USB-A and USB-C, which makes it very handy because you only have to carry one blocker to protect all of your devices, regardless of whether they have a USB-A or USB-C port on them. I tested this blocker by plugging it into my desktop computer's USB-A port, then plugging a cable into the blocker and plugging the other end of the cable into a USB-powered light I have on my downward-looking camera setup. The light indicated it was charging, which demonstrates the data blocker was letting power through. I then unplugged that charging cable from the data blocker and plugged in this USB thumb drive with photos on it into my data blocker. My computer did not detect the thumb drive, which demonstrates the data blocker was doing its job by blocking the data connection between the computer and anything attached to the data blocker.
So here is the summary of my testing in this video. Both brands of card sleeves I tested were 100% effective at protecting my credit cards, employee badge, and hotel key cards. They are inexpensive, but a little bit inconvenient to slide your cards into and out of, and depending on the design of your wallet, they may not fit well into your credit card slots. The $35 card vault I tested worked well for protecting my credit cards and employee badge, but to my surprise, it did not prevent my flipper device from reading the hotel key cards. I found it to be more convenient than the credit card sleeves, but it was considerably more expensive. The RFID wallet worked well and was a little less expensive than the card vault, and it worked on all the card types, including hotel key cards. I did not have any trouble at all inserting or removing cards from this wallet. With this little lever on the side, it's very easy to pull out an individual card, and I like its overall appearance and functionality. My only issue with this wallet is purely personal preference. Because I prefer to pay with cash whenever possible, I would rather have a foldable wallet with a pocket on the side for cash, rather than having a wallet with a money clip on the back. And finally, the data blockers were $10 for a two-pack, and they worked for blocking data. If you ever use public charging stations when you're away from home, I recommend you get a data blocker to carry with you. As always, links to all my sources and to the products I reviewed in this video can be found in the description. All these devices are intended to help you turn the privacy dial up a little bit more by reducing your chances of having your data stolen while you are away from home. My next planned video is my long-awaited review of the above privacy phone and the Brax 3 privacy phone. Spoiler alert, I prefer using both devices with a Wi-Fi hotspot rather than a SIM card. I am still working on that video, and I am not sure yet whether I will include my review of the LovePod cellular satellite mesh hotspot in that video, or if that review will be its own video coming out shortly after my phone reviews. These are just a few of the videos I have planned over the coming weeks and months, so if they are of interest to you, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss them when they are released. I also have several speaking engagements coming up over the next couple of months, including Elizabethtown, Kentucky on Saturday, September 20, and Ackworth, Georgia on Saturday, November 8. I will also soon be announcing events in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Chicago, Illinois, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin please visit brushfirestour.com for more details. As much as I enjoy making product review videos, I literally could not do it without your support. Thank you to everyone who has helped make it possible for me to purchase the products for these videos and to everyone watching and sharing these videos. What other privacy-related products would you like to see reviewed? I can't wait to read your comments.